It's been a year since the war started between the Ukrainians and the Russians, uh, since Russia invaded Ukraine. And we have seen a lot of similarities in the ranks and files of the Russian army. And that depicts in the battlefield in Ukraine. So in order to be effective, you have to have trained with competent junior and senior leaders on the ground and be able to make troop movement or decisions. And Russian military just isn't set up for that. They are very top heavy military that doesn't give very much decision making power to the lower commissioned and non commissioned officers. So their units often times find themselves up a creek without a pal when they engage with the enemy. So that has been evident in most of the battles on various fronts in Ukraine. And so BBC reports that uh, Russia is stepping up its offensive in the east of Ukraine, which is a year on from the start of the war. So some of the fierce fighting is around the city of Volodar in the Donbass region as Russian troops advance into the city, but the Ukrainians are not giving that uh, part of the land easily. They're putting up a resistance uh, using the weapons uh, given to them by the West and uh, its allies. So it's going to be a really tough battle and uh, there's no site near for the war or the leaders to come to a round table for negotiations and peace. So it is going to be an ongoing war after the anniversary of this one year. BBC has this report from the front lines of uh, in Donbass region. Deep in the forest near the town of Vugladar, we get a close-up of the war. The daily battle to hold off the Russians, who aren't winning but aren't giving up either. Inside the town, Ukrainian troops lobbing mortars and obscenities. Moving fast to avoid being targeted themselves. A once prosperous coal mining town is now a wasteland. We head towards the front line with soldiers at the heart of the battle. Their commander, codenamed Beast, has been up all night fighting. How far away are the nearest Russian positions? One kilometer. One kilometer. One kilometer. We move forward carefully. The Russians have no line of sight here. But they have eyes in the sky. Plane. Get down, Doctor. We've just been told to duck down here now and take cover at the wall. The troops have heard something, possibly a Russian drone. The front line is about 500 metres away. They say Russian troops are trying to advance, but they're holding them back. A few hundred souls remain in this broken place, without light or heat, without peace or safety. Solace comes in the form of Oleg Tikachenko, an evangelical pastor in camouflage gear who braves the shelling to deliver aid. It's a matter of life or death, he tells me. We bring bread and water. The risk is huge, but so is the reward, saving people's lives. Hang on, he says. It's one loaf per person. Valentina waits her turn. She's 73 and says she has nowhere else to go. 
We are frightened, of course, but what can we do? We live with it. You can't say, don't shoot. They have their job. We have our lives. What was life like here before the invasion? How were things before? It was good. The town was quiet, calm and clean. People worked. We had money. What can I say? It was a good town. And there was a good life for many in Ukraine, like Ruslan and Denise, nine-year-old twins, the stars of this family video. They were side by side, always, until Russian shelling tore them apart. Their mother, Anastasia, takes me to the park in central Ukraine, where Denise was hit by shrapnel last September. He was lying next to my legs, she says. Why didn't it hit me? Ruslan was screaming. Denise, get up. On his grave, this photo, taken two days before his death. Ruslan cannot accept his best friend is gone. He sends himself messages from Denise's phone. That piece of shrapnel will follow him through life and follow her. One family, one loss, one year of Russia's war. Orligiran, BBC News, Eastern Ukraine.